Hi everybody, Carla here. Are you enjoying Romeo and Juliet so far? I hope so. Let's jump back in to Act 4 of Romeo and Juliet. I really appreciate you tuning in here today to Carla Reads the Classics. Please stay tuned. Act 4, Scene 1. Enter Friar Lawrence and Paris. Friar Lawrence. On Thursday, sir. The time is very short. Paris. My father Capulet will have it so, and I am nothing slow to slack his haste. Friar Lawrence. You say you do not know the lady's mind. Uneven is the course. I like it not. Paris. Immoderately she weeps for Tybalt's death, and therefore have I little talked of love, for Venus smiles not in a house of tears. Now, sir, her father counts it dangerous that she do give her sorrow so much sway, and in his wisdom hastes our marriage to stop the inundation of her tears, which, too much minded by herself alone, may be put from her by society. Now do you know the reason of this haste? Friar Lawrence, aside, I would that I knew not why it should be slowed. Look, sir, here comes the lady toward my cell. Enter Juliet. Paris. Happily met, my lady and my wife. Juliet. That may be, sir, when I may be a wife. Paris. That may be, must be, love, on Thursday next. Juliet. What must be, shall be. Friar Lawrence. That's a certain text. Paris, come you to make confession to this father? Juliet, to answer that I should confess to you. Paris, do not deny to him that you love me. Juliet, I will confess to you that I love him. Paris, so will ye, I'm sure, that you love me. Juliet, if I do so, it will be more price being spoke behind your back than to your face. Paris, Poor soul, thy face is much abused with tears. Juliet, the tears have got small victory by that, for it was bad enough before the spite. Paris, thou wrongst it more with tears with that report. Juliet, that is no slander, sir, which is a truth, and what I spake, I spake it to my face. Paris, thy face is mine, and thou hast slandered it. Juliet, it may be so, for it is not mine own. Are you, at are you at leisure, Holy Father, now, or shall I come to you at evening mass? Friar Lawrence, my leisure serves me, pensive daughter. Now, my lord, we must entreat the time alone. Paris, God shield I should disturb devotion. Juliet, on Thursday early will I rouse ye. Kisses her. Till then, adieu, and keep this holy kiss. Exit Paris. Juliet. Oh, shut the door, and when thou hast done so, come weep with me past hope, past cure, past help. Friar Lawrence. Oh, Juliet, I already know thy grief. It strains me past the compass of my wits. I hear thou must, and nothing may prorogue it, on Thursday next be married to this county. Juliet. Tell me not, Friar, that thou hearest of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. If in thy wisdom thou canst give no help, do thou but call my resolution wise, and with this knife I'll help it presently. Shows him a knife. God joined my heart and Romeo's, thou are hands, and ere this hand, by thee to Romeo sealed, shall be the label to another deed, or my true heart with treacherous revolt turn to another. This shall slay them both. Therefore, out of thy long experienced time, give me some present counsel, or behold, twixt my extremes and me this bloody knife shall play the umpire, arbitrating that which the commission of thy tears and art could to no issue of true honor bring. Be not so long to speak. I long to die if what thou speak speak not of remedy. Friar Lawrence. Hold, daughter, I do spy a kind of hope, which craves as desperate an execution as that is desperate which we would prevent, if rather than to marry this county Paris thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself, then it is likely thou wilt undertake a thing like death to chide away this shame, that copest with death himself to scape from it, and if thou darest, I'll give thee remedy. Juliet, 
Oh, bid me leap rather than marry Paris from off the battlements of yonder tower or walk in thievish waves or bid me lurk where serpents are. Chain me with roaring bears or shut me nightly in a charnel house or air covered quite with dead men's rattling bones with reeky shants and yellow chapless skulls or bid me to go into a new-made grave and hide me with the dead man in his shroud. Things that, to hear them told, have made me tremble, and I will do it without fear or doubt to live an unstained wife to my sweet love. Friar Lawrence, hold then. Go home, be merry. Give consent to marry Paris. Wednesday is tomorrow. Tomorrow night that thou lie alone. Let not the nurse lie with thee in thy chamber. He shows her a vial. Take this vial, being then in bed, and this distilled liquor, liquor drink thou off, when presently through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humor for no pulse, shall keep this native progress, but surcease, no warmth, no breath shall testify thou livest. The rose in thy lips and cheeks shall fade to Palais ashes, thy eyes, windows fall like death when he shuts up the day of life. Each part, deprived of, of supple government, shall stiff and stark and cold appear like death. And in this borrowed likeness of shrunk death, thou shalt continue two and forty hours, and then awake as from a pleasant sleep. Now, when the bridegroom in the morning comes to rouse thee from thy bed, there art thou dead. Then, as the manner of our country is, and thy best robes uncovered on the bier, thou shalt be borne to that same ancient vault where all the kindred of the Capulets lie. In the meantime, against thou shalt awake, shall Romeo by my letters know our drift, and hither shall he come, and he and I will watch thy wakening. And that very night shall Romeo bear thee hence to Mantua, and this shall free thee from this present shame, and no inconstant toy nor womanish fear abate thy valor in the acting it. Juliet, give me, give me, oh, tell me not of fear. Friar Lawrence gives her the vial. Hold, get you gone, be strong and prosperous. In this resolve, I'll send a friar with speed to Mantua with my letters to thy lord. Juliet, Lord, give me strength, and strength shall help afford. Farewell, dear father. They exit separately. Okay, here's what's happening in Act 4, Scene 1. Paris goes to see Friar Lawrence. He wants to talk about his upcoming wedding to Juliet. While he's there, Juliet arrives. Now, she's there because she wants to talk to the friar about how to get out of this mess that she's in, how to get out of this wedding. Well, uh, she and Paris greet each other, and he says, okay, well, I see you need to confess to the friar. I'll leave you guys alone. Friar Lawrence says, yeah, you know, we need to to have this discussion alone. And he gives Juliet a kiss and then he leaves. Well, Juliet is really upset now. So she takes out this, this knife and she tells Friar that she's going to kill herself if he can't think of a way for her to get out of this thing. So Friar Lawrence, again, comes up with a plan. And he says that what he he knows about this potion that if Juliet takes it, it will make it appear as though she is dead and it'll last for 42 hours. And within this 42 hours, they will take her and they will bury her in the Capulet tomb. And everyone will think Juliet is dead, but, uh, and that, and this way she won't have to marry Paris. But, uh, when she wakes up after the 42 hours, the friar and Romeo will be there to help Juliet and Romeo escape to Mantua so they can go there and be together. But he says first he needs to get this letter to Romeo so Romeo knows the plan. And Juliet thinks that this is a good idea. Um, she takes the potion from Friar Lawrence and she says goodbye. And that's basically what happens in Act 4, Scene 1. Act 4, Scene 2. Enter Capulet, Lady Capulet, nurse, and two or three serving men. Capulet gives paper to the first serving men. So many guests invite us here are wit. Exit the first serving man. To second serving man. Sarah, go hire me twenty cunning cooks. Second serving man. 
You shall have none ill, sir, for I'll try if they can lick their fingers. Capulet, how canst thou try them so? Second serving man, Mary, sir, tis an ill cook that cannot lick his own fingers, therefore he that cannot lick his fingers goes not with me. Capulet, go, be gone. We shall be much unfurnished for this time. Exit, second serving man. What, is my daughter gone to Friar Lawrence? Nurse, aye, forsooth. Capulet, well, he may chance to do some good on her. A peevish, self-willed harlotry it is. Enter Juliet. Nurse, see where she comes from, shrift with merry look. Capulet, how now, my head strong? Where have you been gadding? Juliet, where I have learned me to repent the sin of disobedient opposition to you and your benefits, and am enjoined by holy Lawrence to fall prostrate here to beg your pardon. Falls to her knees. Pardon, I beseech you. Henceforward I am ever ruled by you. Capulet, send for the county. Go tell him of this. I'll have this knot knit up tomorrow morning. Juliet, I met the youthful lord at Lawrence's cell and gave him what becomed love I might, not stepping o'er the bounds of modesty. Capulet, why, I am glad on't. This is well. Stand up. Juliet stands up. This is as it should be. Let me see the county. I, Mary, go, I say, and fetch him hither. Now, afford God this reverend holy friar. Our whole city is much bound to him. Juliet, nurse, will you go with me into my closet to help me sort such needful ornaments as you think fit to furnish me tomorrow? Lady Capulet, no, not till Thursday. There is time enough. Capulet, go, nurse, go with her. We'll to church tomorrow. Exit Juliet and the nurse. Lady Capulet, we shall be short in our provision. Tis now near night. Capulet, Tush, I will stir about, and all things shall be well. I warrant thee, wife. Go thou to Juliet. Help to deck up her. I'll not be, I'll not to bed tonight. Let me alone. I'll play the housewife for this once. Lady Capulet exits. Wait, ho, oh, they are all forth. Well, I will walk myself to County Paris to prepare him up against tomorrow. My heart is wondrous light since the same wayward girl is so reclaimed. Exit. So in Act 4, Scene 2, it's a very short scene. Juliet goes back home and she has her vial that she has gotten from Friar Lawrence. And she is on board with this plan that Friar Lawrence has come up with. Well, when she gets home, she sees her father. She falls at his feet and she's very repentant. And she says that she accepts his decision for her to marry Paris and that she's going along with it. And she's so sorry she was being so difficult before, but she's just going to get a good night's sleep and you know, the wedding tomorrow, she will be, she'll be ready for this wedding tomorrow. And uh, that's basically it. And the, and Capulet says that, you know, he's, he's happy that she's come to her senses and that they will be up all night making preparations and getting things ready for the wedding tomorrow. Act four, scene three, enter Juliet and nurse. Juliet, aye, those attires are best. But, gentle nurse, I pray thee, leave me to myself tonight, for I have need of many horizons to move the heavens to smile upon my state, which, well, thou knowest, is cross and full of sin. Enter Lady Capulet. Lady Capulet. What? Are you busy, ho? Need you my help? Juliet. No, madam. We have culled such necessities as are behooful for our state tomorrow, so please you, let me now be left alone, and let the nurse sit this night with you, for I am sure you have your hands full all in this so sudden business. Lady Capulet. Good night. Get thee to bed and rest, for thou hast need. Exit Lady Capulet and nurse. Juliet. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. I have a faint, cold fear thrills through my veins that almost freezes up the heat of life. I'll call them back to comfort me. Nurse! What, what should she do here? My dismal scene, I needs must act alone. Come, vile. She holds out the vial. 
What if this mixture do not work at all? Shall I be married then tomorrow morning? No, no, this shall forbid it. Lie thou there. She lays down her knife. What if it be a poison which the friar subtly hath ministered to have me dead, lest in this marriage he should be dishonored because he married me before to Romeo? I fear it is. And yet, methinks, it should not, for he hath still been tried a holy man. How if, when I am laid in the tomb, I wake before the time that Romeo comes to redeem me? There's a fearful point. Shall I not then be stifled in the vault to whose foul mouth no healthsome air breathes in, and there die strangled ere my Romeo comes? Or, if I live, is it not very like the horrible conceit of death and night, together with the terror of the place, as in a vault, an ancient receptacle where, from for these many hundred years, the bones of all my buried ancestors are packed, where bloody Tybalt, yet but green and earth, lies festering in his shroud, where, as they say, at some hours in the night, spirits resort. Alack, alack, is it not like that eye so early wakening? With that loathsome smell so early waking, so early waking, with that loathsome smells and shrieks like mandrakes torn out of the earth, that living mortals hearing them run mad? Oh, if I wake, shall I not be distraught, environed with all these hideous fears, and madly play with my forefather's joints and pluck the mangled tieball from his shroud, and in this rage with some great kinsman's bone, as with a club, dash out my desperate brains? Oh, look! Methinks I see my cousin's ghost, seeking out Romeo that did spit his body upon a rapier's point. Stay, Tybalt, stay! Romeo, 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 here's a drink. I drink to thee. She drinks and falls down on the bed, hidden by the bed curtains. Okay, so in Act 4, Scene 3, what happens is that Juliet gets Lady Capulet and the nurse to give her some privacy, some time alone at night so that she, on this particular night so that she can drink her potion that Friar Lawrence has given her and she doesn't want to be disturbed she wants privacy so that she can follow through with this plan well as she's getting ready to take the potion she has a moment where she wonders whether Friar Lawrence in order to save his reputation the only way he could see out of it was to give her this potion that will actually kill her so she wonders for a minute if this is actually going to really kill her or if it will be like he said she will just sleep for 42 hours and she wonders about being alone even if she does wake up being alone in the tomb and all of her ancestors bones being buried in the tomb and you know so she's just concerned about the smell that will be there whether or not she'll be able to breathe while she's in the while she's in the tomb and she's just she just has all these concerns but of course her love for Romeo and what the future will bring takes precedence over everything so she takes the potion and she falls onto her bed and that's basically what happens in act 4 scene 3 act 4 scene 4 enter lady capulet and nurse lady capulet hold take these keys and fetch more spices nurse nurse they call for dates and quinces in the pastry. Enter Capulet. Capulet. Come, stir, stir, stir. The second cock hath crowed. The curfew bell hath rung. Tis three o'clock. Look to the baked meats. Good, Angelica. Spare not for the cost. Nurse. Go, you cot queen, go. Get you to bed, Faith. You'll be sick tomorrow for this night's watching. Capulet. No, not a whit, what? I have watched ere now all night for lesser cause and ne'er been sick. Lady Capulet, I, you have been a mouse hunt in your time, but I will watch you from such watching now. Exit Lady Capulet and Nurse. Capulet, a jealous hood, a jealous hood. Enter three or four serving men with spits and logs and baskets. Now, fellow, what is there? Serving man, things for the cook, sir, but I know not what. Capulet. Make haste, make haste, Sarah. Exit the first serving man. To second serving man. Fetch drier logs. Call Peter. He will show thee where they are. Second serving man. I have a head, sir, that will find out logs and never trouble Peter for that matter. Exit the second serving man. Capulet. Mass and well said. 
a merry horse, and ha, thou shalt be loggerhead. Good faith, tis day. The county will be here with music straight, for so he said he would. I hear him near. Music plays within. Nurse, wife, what ho, what nurse, I say? Enter nurse. Go waken Juliet, and go and trim her up. I'll go and chat with Paris. Hi, make haste, make haste. The bridegroom, he has come already. Make haste, I say. Exit. Okay, act four, scene four is just the hustle and bustle of the wedding preparation. Everybody is up all night. They are just trying to make preparations for the next day's wedding. And um, he, Capulet sees Paris approaching and he sends the nurse to go and wake up Juliet because the day has come. Act four, scene five, enter nurse. Nurse, mistress, what mistress? Juliet, fast I warrant her, she. Why lamb, why lady, fee you slug a bed. Why love, I say, madam. Sweetheart, why, bride, what, not a word? You take your pennywords now. Sleep for a week, for the next night, I warrant. The county Paris hath set up his rest, that you shall rest but little. God forgive me, Mary, and amen. How sound is she asleep? I must needs wake her. Madam, 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 I, the county, take you in your bed. He'll fright you up, I faith. Will it not be? She opens the bed curtains. What, dressed in your clothes and down again? I must needs wake you. Lady, lady, lady. Alas, alas, help, help, my lady's dead. Oh, well a day that ever I was born. Some aqua vitae, oh, my lord, my lady. Enter Lady Capulet. Lady Capulet. What noise is here? Nurse. Oh, lamentable day, Lady Capulet. What is the matter, nurse? Look, look, oh, heavy day, Lady Capulet. Oh, me, oh, me, my child, my only life. Revive, look up, or I will die with thee. Help, help, call help. Enter Capulet. Capulet. For shame, bring Juliet forth. Her lord is come. Nurse, she's dead, deceased, she's dead, alack the day. Lady Capulet, alack the day, she's dead, she's dead, she's dead. Capulet, huh? Let me see her, out, alas. She's cold, her blood is settled and her joints are stiff. Life and these lips have long been separated. Death lies on her like an untimely frost upon the sweetest flower of all the field. Nurse, oh, lamentable day. Lady Capulet, oh, woeful time. Capulet, death that hath taken her hence to make me wail, ties up my tongue and will not let me speak. Enter Friar Lawrence, County Paris, and musicians. Friar Lawrence. Come, is the bride ready to go to church? Capulet, ready to go, but never to return. O son, the night before thy wedding day hath death lain with thy wife. There she lies, flower as she was, deflowered by him. Death is my son-in-law, death is my heir, my daughter he hath wedded. I will die and leave him all, life, living, all is death's. Paris. Have I thought long to see this morning's face, and doth it give me such a sight as this? Capulet. A cursed, unhappy, wretched, hateful day. Most miserable hour that e'er time saw in lasting labor of this pilgrimage. But one poor one, one poor and loving child, but one thing to rejoice and solace in, and cruel death hath catched it from my sight. Nurse. Whoa, oh, woeful, woeful day, most lamentable day, most woeful day that ever, ever I did yet behold. Oh, day, oh, day, oh, hateful day. Ne'er was seen so black a day as this. Oh, woeful day, woeful day. Paris, beguiled, divorced, wronged, spited, slain, 
most detestable death, by thee beguiled, by cruel, cruel thee quite overthrown, O oh, love, O oh, life, not life, but love and death. Capulet, despised, distressed, hated, martyred, killed, uncomfortable time, why camest thou now to murder, murder our solemnity? O oh, child, O oh, child, my soul and my child, dead art thou, alack, my child is dead, and with my child my joys are buried. Friar Lawrence, peace, ho, for shame, confusions cured lives not in these confusions. Heaven and yourself had part in this fair maid. Now heaven hath all, and all the better it is for the maid. Your part in her you could not keep from death, but heaven keeps his part in eternal life. The most you sought was her promotion, for twas your heaven she should be advanced. And weep ye now, seeing she is advanced above the clouds, as high as heaven itself? Oh, in this love, you love your child so ill that you run mad, seeing that she is well. She's not well married that lives long, that lives married long, but she's best married that dies married young. Dry up your tears and stick your rosemary on this fair course, and, as the custom is, and in her best array, bear her to church. For though some nature bids us to all lament, Yet nature's tears are reason's merriment. Capulet. All things that we ordained festival turn from their office to black funeral, our instruments to melancholy bells, our wedding cheer to a sad burial feast, our solemn hymns to sullen dirges change, our bridal flowers serve for a buried course, and all things change them to the contrary. Friar Lawrence. Sir. You go in, and madam, you go with him. And go, Sir Paris, every one prepare to follow this fair course unto her grave. The heavens do lower upon you for some ill. Move them no more by crossing their nigh will. Exit Capulet, Lady Capulet, Paris, and Friar Lawrence. First musician. Faith, we may put up our pipes and be gone. Nurse. Honest good fellows, ah, put up, put up, for ye well know this is a pitiful case. First musician, I, by my troth, the case may be amended. Enter Peter. Peter, musicians, oh, musicians, heart's ease, heart's ease. Oh, and you will have me live, play, heart's ease. First musician, why heart's ease? Peter, oh, musicians, because my heart itself plays, my heart is full. Oh, play me some merry dump to comfort me. First musician, not a dump, we, tis no time to play now. Peter, you will not then? First musician, no. Peter, I will then give it you soundly. First musician, what will you give us? Peter, no money on my faith, but the gleek, I will give you the minstrel. First musician, then I will give you the serving creature. Peter, then will I lay the serving creature's dagger on your on your pate. I will carry no crotches. I, I'll air you. I'll fly you. Do you note me? First musician, and you ray us and fa us? You note us? Second musician, pray you put up your dagger and put out your wit. Peter, then have that you with my wit. I will dry beat you with an iron wit and put up my iron dagger. Answer me like men. He sings, When griping grief the heart doth wound and doleful dumps the mind oppress, then music with her silver sound. Speaks, Why silver sound? Why music with her silver sound? What say you, Simon Catling? First musician, Marry, sir, because silver hath a sweet sound. Peter, prates, what say you, Hugh Rebeck? Second musician, I say silver sound because musicians sound for silver. Peter, prates too, what say you, James Soundpost? Third musician, faith, I know not what to say. Oh, I, Peter, oh, I cry you mercy, you are the singer. I will say for you, it is music with her silver sound because musicians have no gold for sounding. He sings, then music with her silver sound, with speedy help, doth lend redress. Exit Peter. First musician, 
What a pestilent knave is this same. Second musician. Hang him, Jack. Come, we're in here. Tarry for the mourners and stay and stay dinner. Exit. This is act four, scene five. What happens here is the nurse goes and she is unable to rouse Juliet and she panics and she screams and Lady Capulet hears and she comes in and says, well, what's wrong? What's going on? And the nurse tells her that Juliet is dead. The nurse uh, is still, you know, just really, really taking this hard. And uh, Lady Capulet, she too begins to cry and they scream for help. And Lord Capulet comes and he sees what's going on. And he says, you know, let, let me see, let me, let me check this out. And he too believes her to be dead. And they all just have this, you know, this very mournful session where they really believe Juliet to be dead. Well, uh, Friar Lawrence and Paris, they arrive and, you know, for Paris, this is his wedding day. But Friar Lawrence, he knows everything that's going on. And this gives him an opportunity to put his plan into action with getting Juliet into the tomb. And in the meantime, uh, there are also musicians in the house and there's still the hustle and bustle and all of that going on. Because again, this is supposed to be a happy day, a happy occasion, but the family has found Juliet dead or so they believe her to be. And that's pretty much what's happening in Act 4, Scene 5. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. I really appreciate it. Please see the episode details for ways that you can subscribe to the podcast or to make a small contribution to the podcast. Either way, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining me here at Carla Reads the Classics. Until next time.